21st century managers. This is a message directed at you. Key concepts and challenges as a responsible leader is a message well overdue. Professor Toombs and White say companies have power on governing our lives. If Walmart was an army, it would be the second largest military worldwide. Milton Friedman, an economist, said that your only responsibility is to make a profit, for you to make shareholders happy with dividends they saw fit, that any social responsibility is the company's own address, but with so many people you're trying to impress, it's only right that your profit comes first. Although, that was the last century, maybe not the 21st. The likes of Adam Smith, an economist and philosopher, reveals when moral principles initiate our behaviour, the invisible hand may govern us. Like VW in 2015, telling their consumers they were being green, their reading dials and engines were programmed to screen specific emissions when tested on diesel that's clean. So really, what they were saying and doing opposed, which led to a huge ordeal, the motor company were exposed. Wells Fargo, for another example, they didn't care for their people, forcing eight bank accounts on customers. I was fine because it's legal. For Tesco, the 2013 horse meat exposal through an uproar and to regain that trust has damaged rapport. You see it was their first fall in annual profits since 1994. 21st century leaders you cannot ignore. Consumers can watch you like never before. So it's become apparent operations in your business are increasingly transparent. Which leads us on to CSR. A fresh approach by Elkington, an author, starting with the triple bottom line. Three stakeholders in a business you cannot decline. People, planet, profit. They all align. Wells Fargo CEO ignored CSR and its plausibility, putting profits as a detriment to customer sustainability. Managers in that industry justified their actions consistently, using the term financial health to get out of deliberate villainry. Professor Archie Carroll's made a pyramid to encourage responsibility. So you can think about your business, your values, your integrity. Like Friedman, there's the importance of economic responsibility, but higher up the levels, also philanthropic capability. Companies become more ethical depending on where their values lie. So for Patagonia's CEO, it wasn't how, but why. You may not be eager to know about where your products come from, about the factories abroad being ethical on what you're wearing, but Vaughn mentioned how when you do find out, you're likely to start caring. Writer Wayne Visser said that philanthropy should run alongside operations, so promoting welfare of others makes success through generations. Take Black Friday and ask, what profits were you taking? What people were you helping besides the money making? Don't be mistaken where your moral compass is. Profits for your shareholders and your own people are miss. Was it money that drove you or your business idea first? A hunger and a thirst to be better, not for worse. 10 million Patagonia made on one weekend and donated it all to grassroot groups protecting sources like water, air and soil and more. Evelyn bought moped helmets for all of their workers in Vietnam. Braintree donated half of their sales. They said they want lasting styles. That was the plan. This corporate social responsibility is completely voluntary. Implementing CSR is complex, it takes the extraordinary. Nature doesn't have a voice, it will just deteriorate. It's a lot for a business to take on, it's a lot to compensate. Fleming and Jones said CSR never really started. It's right, businesses take more than what can be put back, what can be planted. Implementing CSR is a process that takes time, then time to communicate the three bottom lines. Through the Global Reporting Initiative, companies can follow guidelines that pioneer the impact of climate change and human rights. Whole Foods' John Mackey believes in a healthy, conscious business. His own ethical anchors have guided his service. He embraces his business, Whole Foods' higher purpose, benefiting both humans and the environment he nurses. He questions whether your business sees the environment as a stakeholder. Are you using your power to be more efficient or just for the next hostile takeover? Professor Ed Freeman says you have to start by asking the questions. Which stakeholders do we want to create value? Where do we want to see progression? If stakeholders share the same views, it's easy to impress them. Paul Pollan got them on board. He simplified the mayhem. He got rid of hedge funds and sorts, kept long-term investors, got rid of quarterly reports. Power in the global economy is concentrated and organised around a relatively small group of corporations in size. Fleming, Jones, Visser and Carroll all contribute to CSR as a topic, even if it was just to criticise and stop it. The way CSR is understood and implemented will change from country to country. Globalisation raised awareness for the UN Standards Authority for business to not just make money. 
Walmart turned to Patagonia, a company 100 of its size. They work together. Who could your company advise? This kind of legislation gives us an insight into the future of a responsible world, as companies do less at the expense of nature, but keep it preserved. Being responsible is having an obligation to make something happen, to have control over things bigger than you can imagine. The OED says it's about dealing with or controlling things or people, a sustainable business with a shared noble cause, John Mackey says, is the ideal. Leaders of the 21st century, are you heading for danger? Consumers of the 21st century, they're looking for something greater. Changing behaviour. Being a part of the environment's favour. There's no need to be strangers. Nature sustains us. So we must sustain nature.